Hello, I'm Robert, and you're welcome here in my digital shop. On today's episode of What's My Workbench, I'm going to be working on a book cover. This one here is going to be made uh, specifically for someone for their Bible. I think it's going to come out really good, or at least I sure hope so. The person I'm making it for is a really special person, and I want him to, you know, really like what he gets. So hopefully it comes out that way. I think we all start off hoping our project's that good, but I'm really going to try hard on this. I've practiced a couple different ones. You've probably seen a couple shorts of some of the stuff that I've got going on. But I want to take you over here. And I've, I've been digging through some leather, and I wanted to find um, a piece of leather that had flaws in it and use those flaws to make something pretty. And uh, you probably know why I'm doing it that way. So I'm going to show you here what I've got going, because if it doesn't work out, then I guess it doesn't work out. But if it works out good, I don't want you to think, well, that was an accident that worked out. So let's take a look at it. Appreciate having you in the shop with me today. I've got this piece of Herman Oak. It's about 10 ounce leather. And here in the, I believe this is off the front shoulder here around the neck, we've got these areas where it got creased while they were processing the leather. And uh, I really like how this all radiates out from here. So you saw me create this basket weave. This basket weave will be the back panel on that book cover. And this is the size. So what I'm gonna do, I put these tools here to help keep me my orientation right. So I'm gonna create a pattern on the leather. So it's gonna be the mountain range pattern but it's gonna go here. So I guess you have to kind of squint and look, but it's gonna come like this. And my hopes are that these areas here are used to create a little bit of a uh, sunbeams in this backfield here. I could come up with another way of uh, filling this, or I guess I could just embrace the fact that it's plain, but it looks too plain to me. So that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, cut out a panel here using these uh, wrinkles, flaws, and then I'm gonna overlay a mountain range on here. So I'm gonna mark these four corners here. And I think, yeah, I think that'll work. Let me tip it down just a little bit here. Okay. I'll mark my four corners. So I'll cut this out and then I'll meet you over on the workbench. All right, so uh, I finished cutting it out. I, I cut it a little bit oversized and I trimmed it to size, to make sure I got things turned the way I wanted. I started with a tracing of the mountains that I was looking for. And then I laid vellum over that, traced it onto here and now, and being on vellum helps me to kind of figure where I want it because I want these, to me these are going to be sun rays coming out of here. And I want this here to be a little bisected here in this mountain range. And there's a pretty good groove here and I don't want to put that across the top of a mountain. Uh, so I'll move this over here a little bit. Um, Maybe I'll tip this a little bit like that. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'm going with it right there. Okay, I think this is gonna work. I guess if not, then uh, we can all laugh about it later. Overall, making the uh, cover for the book, I don't think is really all that challenging. The toughest thing is if you don't have the book is trying to get a good measurement. 
Uh, luckily, this book's got a fairly soft cover on it. So I think that'll give me a little bit of, uh, of uh, relief in trying to get one that you can get the covers inside this overall book cover when I'm done. Well, I'm not going to have you fall through every bit of it, but I'm going to use this beveler here. <clears throat> and I'll bevel this pattern in. I'm going to think about this. Uh, I'm going to let this sit overnight and think about whether I want to try to put some texture in here or not. There's where we're at so far. I've decided I'm going to take this one step at a time. I may put some detail on the mountains, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add color to this background here. Um, so let me turn it all this way so I'm not working over the top of the other color. I know. Looks like a kid did it. Well, I'm a kid at heart. So I'm going to set this over here, let this dry a little bit, and we'll come back once the, uh, the dye is ready for the next step. While the dye is drying, I need a couple strips of leather to make the pockets on the back side. And I've determined three and a quarter is the right size. So the next thing I need to do, and this is still drying, is to figure out the panel that's gonna go in the middle. So I come up with the overall width that will go around the book. And so the book is five and a half inches. The cover is five and a half inches by an inch uh, thick. So five and a half twice is 11, plus the inch is 12. Then you lose some distance of, uh, uh, because of the thickness of the leather there. So I need to be, and this is about where I think the book will go. The seam is going to be here, and it won't tuck all the way into there. Um, but, so, 12. So if I make it 12 and a half to there to account for the stretch around the binding of the book, 12 and a half. That gives me an overall of 13 and 3 eighths, 12 and a half. I think that's about right. So the reason why I'm trying to figure all that out is on the inside is going to be this piece and this piece. And so I want to cut a piece of leather that is six and three quarter inches wide. And that will make up the binding of the book and keep the edge looking the same. This will be the binding on the edge of those two panels. You're going to see just a strip here. roughly like that when I'm done. So I want to have this area here somewhat finished before I assemble this together. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and oil this and I'm going to antique it. It won't pick up a whole lot of color, but it'll be closer to the color of this because all this has on the edge here is oil, resin, antique, and then more resin. I'm going to do that to this panel. That's how I'm going to treat this panel here. And then while that's drying, I'm not going to go through that whole process. It'll be as similar as what I do with this. While that's drying, I can work on this next part, which is going to be attaching this pocket here on the inside and this pocket here on the inside. So let me get uh, some of this going and then we'll come back. Let me show you where I'm at here. So I've attached both of these uh, sides and it just, it's uh, attached with contact cement yet to be sewn. And this is what this is gonna look like. This doesn't have antique on it yet. I gotta antique that. But I'm working on this piece in the middle. So when this gets finished here, the book will tuck in here to hold the, the flaps to the, to the book itself. And I don't like this hard edge here. Now, I could just make this centerpiece that connects them, you know, uh, wide enough to stitch those together there and leave it that way. But then I get thinking about how this edge looks. And I think it would look better if the edge looked, uh, you know, continuous out to here. Like I said, I'm probably overthinking it, but what I'm gonna do to uh, alleviate my concerns of that look and still give this room to work the way I want it to is I'm going to, I'm gonna create a little bit of a notch here so that that cover of the book fits in there a little bit better. There's three quarters of an inch longer here than the size of the book. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come in uh, move this over here so it's easier here, burn an inch here. I'm gonna come in here three eighths of an inch and put a mark. And I'm going to create a notch that comes in here an inch and turns and comes across. So I'm gonna do that on both sides. That will allow me to glue this in along this side over here, stitch it in continuous, and I think the book will fit in this better. If not, I've just made it really hard to put the book in the cover. The way to alleviate this stress in this corner is I'll make a hole here with a punch and then I will come back and connect those to cut that piece out. So I think this makes sense. Okay, I'm going to put a light pencil mark here and here, and I'm going to antique this area here so it all matches. So I'll put resiline as a resist, antique this. This already has resiline on it. I'm going to antique this, and then we'll come back when it's ready to uh, start the assembly here. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish this edge here and this edge here because it'll be really hard to finish that once it's sewn together and I don't want to forget it. And to do that, I'm just going to round the front, not the back of it. I put resist between these two areas here. I, I don't know if I said it, but the reason why I didn't do anything here is because I'm going to be gluing this to the back sides of these panels and I don't want the resist to resist the contact adhesive. I mean, you can rough it up, but I, I just figure it's easier just to leave that the way it is. So I'm going to put a little bit of uh, antiquing down the center here. There's not any tooling here. It's not going to do a whole lot, but it will bring it more in tone with the uh, uh, the two panels that are going to be on either side of it. I had toyed with putting a sun on the sunset and then doing rays. But the, the more you do that, then the, the more of, you know, do you try to make it look real? These mountains don't really, you know, represent real mountains. I guess they represent them, but they don't look realistic. And I felt like 
the more I try to make one thing look uh, realistic, then it affects how others are perceived or how they look. So I do believe that uh, the young man that this is for, and I keep saying young man, young man, I have to think about it, but he's, I should know, but he's about 40 years old, so... All right, we'll let this sit for a bit and then we'll buff this off. Tell me what you think. Do you like that? These wrinkles in here, I think it looks very interesting. I, I like how that looks. We'll set this aside, let this set up, and then we'll put uh, resin on it again, and we'll be ready to work on the assembly. So we are ready uh, for the next step here, which is close to the final assembly. Not quite there, but pretty much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I don't want to cut a groove, but I'm going to put a light line through here so that I can see where this overlaps at. Slight dimple there. On this side, I'm going to do the same thing here. I can be a little more heavy handed here because it's not going to be showing. This will give me an area that I can put contact adhesive here and here. And I did put some resiline in here to slick this down. So I want to rough this up some here. Give that, opened up those fibers a little bit and give the area for the contact adhesive to penetrate, soak into the leather. Now, you could make this all one piece across here, tool the two separate sides, but I went this route because I thought it would be best because I was figured I may have to make these outside panels a couple times to get where I wanted, and I didn't want to have one side looking good, and then you go to the other side and like, oh, that's not good, and then have to start completely from scratch. So that's one reason why I did these uh, separate panels like I'm assembling now so that made the job probably more complicated than it needed to be so uh, as you know I'm making the uh, Bible cover with two panels and a piece of binding between the two and I explained the reason why I did that is really because I wanted to make these two panels and I was afraid that I would ruin the whole thing if I made a mistake on one side, I would have to redo all of it. Uh, but if you wanted to make uh, a book cover and not have the panels separate, if you wanted to make it the easy way, uh, especially if there wasn't any tooling in it, if it's just a, a leather cover, the easiest way I f have found to do that to, to measure how much leather I need is just to take a strip of leather the same thickness as what you're going to use for your cover and just uh, bring that around the whole book here and then mark the other side here like that now you know how much leather it takes to go all the way around it. The only thing you need to add from that, because I did edge to edge, would be the width that you want for your um, stitch line around the outside that you attach the two pockets on the inside. I think that makes sense. So in this case, for this book, the book itself is, this one is five and five eighths, 
and is uh, around an inch and a half. So instead of figuring all that up and adding it and then trying to guess how much you need for the other part of it, you can wrap it around there like I did. So we come up and we're at 12 and a half and then you need to add the distance for your stitching on there. So in this case, I would probably add three quarters of an inch to that and that will allow for two seams around the outside that's three-eighths of an inch. I just wanted to throw that in there because I'm making it with the panels and I've explained enough why I'm doing it that way, but you don't have to make it with the panels if you're just doing a plain leather cover and I wanted to keep it simple if I could. So we'll do the assembly here now. So yeah, this really stands out, and I don't like that. Across here will be all hidden whenever the book is uh, installed in the cover. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a uh, tan coat on here, slick this down, and then I'm going to apply um, the antiquing here, and that will help these edges here match up. Um, yeah, I think that's the... I think that's the answer to it. So I'm not going to have you here through that whole process. I'm going to apply that and then we'll come back here and, and we will be ready to do the final trimming and edge work on the panels. Uh, then dye the edges. We'll get that all completed. And yeah, I think, uh, I think we're getting there. All right. So I went ahead and trimmed and sanded the uh, edges so they're true to each other. Before I do the round over though, I'm gonna establish my stitch line. I find it's easier when I've got a nice straight edge here. And I want the stitch line to be pretty much dead center in that border there. Uh, I think that'll work pretty good. Yes, I could machine sew this, but I'm going to hand sew this. It doesn't take that long, and I like the look of it. Okay, we'll set up and stitch this. So here's the Bible cover and this is the, the face of it. And I don't want to have the um, uh, double back stitches anywhere up in here. So I'm gonna wanna have them down here. And I wanna stitch towards myself. So I'm gonna start here uh, two thirds away across the the uh, the bottom corner of it here. I think I'm making sense. So I'm using royal blue thread from Tiger Ritza. It's probably gonna look more black than anything, but it is blue. And I started here, this is actually the bottom of the front panel, if you're holding the book this way. And I'm starting here because I think it draws less attention to have my stitches finished up there. And I'm not starting on a corner because I don't want to have my knot in that corner. That's going to be one of the weaker areas in the stitching. And uh, so I'm just going to take, work my way around here. I'm doing a saddle stitch using uh, John James needles and the 0.08 Tiger Ritza thread in Royal Blue. So I won't bore you with the whole thing here. I'll come back when we get ready to 
wrap up the stitching. As I'm doing the stitching here, I, I hope, uh, I hope this is coming out good. I, I think it looks pretty good. It's the very first uh, cover I've made tooled for a book. I've made a couple of other books that didn't have nearly the detail into, uh, into making them as this one here. And uh, I think I said earlier, but in case it didn't make it through the editing, the uh, mountains on here are important for this young man. He lived in the mountains for uh, quite a few years. I keep saying young man. I, I have to get through my mind. I think he's probably 40. But uh, anyway, uh, I wanted to do something special for him. He's a, a special guy, and, and that's not like some hidden meeting. He is... He's a great guy, a hard worker, uh, probably one of the hardest working guys I know of at that age. There's been lots of times he's held more than one job. And um, yeah, he's just a hard working guy. And then on top of holding jobs, there's lots of times he volunteers at his church. So I, I hope he enjoys this uh, Bible cover. I hope it brings him... Uh, as much joy as it was uh, hard work for me to, to make, it was, uh, it was a little bit of a challenge to try to figure some things through. And, and I think I said earlier, but some of these panels I made more than one time trying to find what I was really happy with. And this last piece that I cut out with these flaws in the leather, uh, I think really helped the sky look better for me on there. And I think, uh, you know, leather with flaws in it is perfect for a Bible cover for the person that's carrying it. And uh, I know I'll probably get mushy here, but, you know, we all have flaws and some are seen and some are not, but they're all there. And I hope that uh, this uh, Bible cover looks good on his book and that his book continues to give him comfort. So I'll stop waxing on here and uh, I'll come back when I've got the stitching completed and ready to start working on the edges. Well we are making progress now. Um, got all the stitching in. It's like I said it's royal blue it probably looks more black than blue. I probably should have used a lighter blue. I'm gonna go ahead and work on these edges. This is the Ron's number four. Okay. Just gonna get some water and we will burnish these down here. So I've decided not to dye the edges dark. I think it matches pretty well with what we've got going on here. And I would then have to try to get this dark since it's already attached. I think that'd be a mistake to try to do that. And you probably notice I cut these in there. A lot of times it seems like when you have leather that's the same and it comes around there, it seems like it wants to um, kind of like puff open more there. And I thought if I did this edge on here like this, that would help keep that from happening. And even with it cut there, the top of the binding of the book will probably not show. If so, it's gonna be like right there at the edge. So that's the reason why I did it that way. We're down here to the end. My edges are done. I'm gonna put a coat of resolene on everything. I'm gonna start on the inside first. Okay, 
Let's let that dry and we'll come back and recap. Well, there we go. Um, the first uh, tooled book cover that I've done. I hope you uh, have enjoyed following along. I think the use of the leather that had the wrinkles in it helped create some interest in the sky. That was my goal, and, and I think it achieved that. Um, this is the basket weave uh, design on the back. It's only the second panel I've made like this. I did a test panel, a little bit smaller one. And um, so I kind of threw my feet in the arena here with that one. I think, uh, I think it came out pretty nice. And, uh, and, and I hope that uh, uh, the young man that gets this uh, likes it. And the thing is, he's uh, such a kind person. He would never tell me if he didn't like it. Uh, so anyway, all I, I've been just prattling on here. I appreciate you spending time with me in the shop today. Please like, share, and subscribe. But more importantly, have a great day.